Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh -huh. It's good to see all of you. We have more on this side than this side. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I can, I can manage that. I was just thinking as we were singing these beautiful songs in Chinese, and I was humming <laughs> in Chinese too. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking that all over the world, you know, there are millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people praising the Lord Jesus Christ, honoring Him, and uh, all the many dialects and, and, and uh, languages. The book of Revelation uh, speaks of, of, of how great that's going to be one day in, in heaven, where people from every tribe and every language, every people's group, will be there to glorify Christ forever. Have you ever wondered, though, because we, we have so many different languages? Uh, probably there's no language that's spoken more often than what language? Chinese. Pardon? Chinese. Chinese, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, and, and have you ever wondered when it speaks about in heaven we'll be singing praises to, to Christ to a Heavenly Father forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, what language will we use? Are we gonna, are we gonna understand each other? I think so. <laughs> so whatever language we have in heaven, we're gonna understand it. <laughs> I think so. Uh, the Bible doesn't tell us that clearly, but, uh, but, but there's a sense in which the, the unity in heaven is gonna be so so great and so grandiose that we're going to understand each other well. We're going to understand what everybody's saying and speaking and sharing and certainly in, in singing praises uh, to, to the Lord. But that's not part of my sermon. That just came out of a, our, our singing together <laughs> and how meaningful that was uh, for, for me. Uh, the next uh, several times I speak at Grace and Joy, I will probably be speaking from the book of Mark. Uh, Mark uh, was, the, uh, was the earliest uh, gospel written, uh, probably about 60 AD. Uh, and it compares favorably to both Luke and Matthew. And so with Luke and Matthew and Mark together, the, uh, they have a word, uh, the word synoptic describes uh, these three books because they're, they're, they're quite similar in terms of stories that they share. Uh, uh, Matthew and Luke wrote their Gospels later than Mark, maybe about 70 AD, and then John sort of stands over here by himself in, in terms of how the Holy Spirit, God, directed him to write the Gospel of John. Uh, we've talked about that before, but it's so amazing when you look at the at how, how was God's plan to present to us four Gospels, all the good news about Jesus Christ. But in, in Mark, uh, Mark is, is noted for his uh, uh, relationship with people like uh, Paul and uh, Barnabas and, and certainly uh, Peter as well. Uh, it was in uh, uh, John Mark's home. His mother was uh, named Mary that uh, Peter came from prison and knocked on the door and this uh, a young lady named Rhoda <laughs> opened the door and, 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 and she saw Peter, uh, but it was, she was so amazed. They'd been praying that Peter would be released from prison, right? <laughs> so she goes back and tells her, but Peter's here. They said, well, go ahead and open the door for him. <laughs> and so uh, that's one of the first times that, that Mark, uh, uh, saw Peter. Peter was much older than he was, and Mark may have been much more than just a teenager at that time. Uh, but later he had relationships with uh, both uh, uh, the great Apostle Paul and Barnabas, who was a kind of a relationship to, uh, to Mark. And then later in life, he encountered Peter again in, in Rome. And from, from Peter's messages, from what Peter had to say about the life of Jesus, Mark had a first-hand experience of knowing about Jesus through the, the life of Peter. Mark is, is sometimes thought to be the one who 
who talks about Jesus, the eternal Son of God, as the miracle-working Son of God. And, and just looking at uh, the first chapter of uh, Mark, and we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, dealing with the, uh, the leper in, towards the end of that chapter. Uh, but as, uh, starting with about verse uh, uh, 27, Mark goes right to the, um, to the ministry of Jesus. He, he bypasses the, uh, the birth stories of Jesus that are found in both Matthew and Luke. But, but in Mark, he starts with John the Baptist <laughs> foretelling the coming of the, of, of, of the one who's going to be the Savior of the world, Christ. Uh, and then, then we soon find Mark dealing with very quick things, like driving out an evil spirit, starting in verse uh, 27. Uh, and it says in that section, like verse 27, the people were so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching, and with authority. The people quickly recognized that this man, Jesus, who was going to become known as the Christ, the, the Son of God, spoke truth to them. Uh, not, and, and, and it says several times, not as the, as the teachers of the law, but, but, but with authority, Jesus taught. And then he acted on these. And in verses 29, it talks about the, the many people that he healed, including uh, the mother, uh, the, the mother-in-law of Peter uh, was healed as well in that, in that setting. Uh, a little bit later, in verse uh, 32, the demon-possessed were, 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 were being released from demon possession. And then, uh, and then the, the, the wonderful story about, uh, about the leper. Um, I, I visited with, with many, many Chinese, as all of you know. And uh, I've done lots of Bible studies. And even with, with people who come from China recently, uh, they often say this, and they pick this up from other Chinese. And I've gotten the feeling that many, many, many Chinese have a sense in which the Bible is a good book. <laughs> it has some very good stories, a very applicable stories to our lives today. And we learn a lot from, from the Bible. Uh, but, but where the, uh, the twist comes is in, is, are, are these stories believable? <laughs> uh, like recently, a, a Chinese student who I, I, I really enjoyed. Being. He's very open, and he's uh, he's enjoying reading about about Jesus. He said to me, "Bob, do you really believe these these stories are true? Do you believe they really really happened?" And uh, and that's the feeling that a lot of people may have, not just Chinese, but but a lot of people from around, including many many Americans. Uh, they, 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 they question, we just don't see anything like that happen today in the way that the Bible records it. And I say to them, yes, I believe these stories really happen. And then they kind of open eyes and say, want some explanation? And said, well, uh, Jesus was not any ordinary uh, person. <laughs> he was, he's always existed in the form of the eternal Son of God. Came to earth, uh, and in the time of God's choosing, be born of a woman, Mary, a virgin, and lived a life without sin. Died on the cross for our sins, and was resurrected, and one day will we'll come again. And, and if you believe, if you even begin to believe that, that that's possible, <laughs> then you can begin to believe that yes, Jesus Christ had the power to do these kinds of things that are listed in, in Mark. But not only that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we have miracles and things of unusual incredibility happening even today. And we'll talk a bit about that maybe in, 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 a, in a few moments. Uh, so uh, looking at the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the leper, jumping right into that uh, story, uh, we, 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 I, want, I want us to think about the number of, of, of situations where Jesus is dealing with people who seemingly be in a helpless positions of life. They have no hope, uh, such as a leper. 
uh, such as a, a, a person that is in, in, has been invaded by evil spirits, uh, 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 people who are who are who are dying, uh, and, and how Jesus at times gives life from people who who, who are dying. Uh, so um, we, we 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 see that that Jesus did unusual and and and, uh, and, and tremendous things. Uh, looking, by, uh, looking at the at the story a little bit more closely, the, the, it just begins with a man with leprosy came to him and met him on his knees. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, for the leper to to say that, he has heard some amazing stories about the incredible um, uh, ability of Jesus to heal people, and maybe he's seen some of that himself. He, he, he has heard or he has seen, uh, in Mark 1, 20, I says, Jesus heals many people uh, right from the beginning of, of, his, of his ministry. Uh, but if you are willing, you can make me clean. That's a, that's a request that, that he makes. And he seems to believe that Jesus can do this. <laughs> if you are willing, you can make me clean. I've seen you do some things. I've heard you do some things. Uh, and then, filled with uh, compassion. William Barclay uh, uh, says for that word, uh, compassion, uh, is that Jesus was moved with pity to the depths of his being. Moved to pity in the, to the depths of his being. That he felt deeply and profoundly the hurt and the pain of, 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 of the leper. Um, he wasn't a leper himself, but Jesus could identify with, with that uh, situation. And, and then Jesus does an amazing something. He touched the leper. He actually touched the leper. No one did that. Well, maybe, maybe his mother did. <laughs> maybe other lepers might. <laughs> but certainly not a, 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 a person who was healthy physically uh, a, a sound of mind and, and body. And no one touches a leper. Uh, but Jesus did. And, and that shows us something about his, who he is and, and, and his love and his, his, his compassion. And, and then the power of Jesus is seen immediately. The leprosy left him and he was cured. Uh, we're, we're not going to go ahead and talk more about why Jesus sent him to the priest for uh, to have a, a document that he had been cleaned of his leprosy, but that was something important for a person to do, so other people would know that he had been uh, cleansed. And we won't talk about why did he not obey Jesus' instructions not to tell anybody, but because he did tell people, <laughs> many more people knew about it, and so that uh, Jesus was was just. Um, an onslaught of more and more people. Everywhere Jesus went, there were hundreds of people around him. He could hardly go anywhere. That's why in, earlier in, in chapter 1, he went to a solitary place to pray. There were times that Jesus had to do that because he was not only uh, fully God, he was also a fully human being. He, he felt tired. He, he, he grew weary. His strength, physical strength, at times lingered, and he needed he needed to be away to be with the Father. Of course, he was with the Heavenly Father almost at all times. They were like one, the Father and the Son. But talking a little bit about this issue of leprosy, I was able to find just a few facts about leprosy. But Jesus understood lepers had special needs. And one of the things I'm hoping we'll be thinking about today in terms of, of, of this is, is people with special needs that are in our midst and how we as a congregation, how we as individuals help people with, with special, special needs. But, and, and when Jesus said in, in Matthew 18, 8, uh, heal the sick, cleanse lepers. <laughs> that was one of the commissions that he gave to the disciples when he sent them out uh, to, uh, to be on mission for him. Uh, 
but the fate of the, of the leper was truly hard. A guy named uh, E.W.G. Masterson, in his article, Leprosy in the Dictionary of Christ and the Gospels, says these things. <clears throat> no other disease reduces a human being for so many years to such a hideous wreck. He, he's writing in a kind of a 19th century uh, language. Uh, and so here is some of the facts he shared. It begins with an unaccountable lethargy and pain in the joints. Then there appears on the body, especially on the back, symmetrical discolored patches. On them little nodules form, at first pink, then turning brown. The skin is thickened. The nodules gather especially in the folds of the cheek, the nose, the lips, and the forehead. The whole appearance of the face is changed till the man loses his human appearance often loses his human appearance. The nodules go larger and larger, they ulcerate, and from them comes a foul discharge. Uh, the eyebrows fall out, the, the eyes become staring, the voice becomes hoarse, and the breath and the breath wheezes because of the ulceration of the vocal cords. The hands and the feet also ulcerate. Slowly the sufferer becomes a mass of ulcerated growth. The average growth course of the disease is about nine years, and it ends in mental decay, <coughs> coma, and ultimately death, usually from infections that have caught up with the, the person with leprosy. Because I understand that because of the, the nature of the, of, of, of the sores and affecting the nerve endings, you may not feel as much pain as you might think a, a, a person should feel in that situation. So infection is, uh, is often the final diagnosis of, of death. But, so, that describes something of the physical disease that, that separated uh, a leper from family and friends, <clears throat> often living in colonies. Uh, uh, but, but this has an effect on them spiritually as well. Uh, Moses was, was, was given some instructions about leprosy. In Le Leviticus chapter 13, uh, if a person began to have what looked like facial uh, 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 sores, uh, they needed to go to the priest because they were considered unclean with those sores. Uh, and uh, so they would, they would go to the, to the priest and, and, uh, and, and often then resulting, if, if it was diagnosed, and something that's going to be contagious, well, they didn't know about contagious then, but, but, but that, you shouldn't, that you shouldn't be around someone who has leper, leprosy, that uh, uh, they would be separated from, um, uh, from other people. They would live in, in, in colonies. Uh, the, the, it was hoped that the, the priest, within a few days, could pronounce ceremonially that the person was clean again. Uh, but that, if, if they had what we know as leprosy, that didn't clear up in seven days. And so they had to, to come back. Uh, and, then, and finally, if, if, it, if it continued, according to Leviticus, uh, the, the priest would, would, would say to individuals, you must do certain things. And this is probably so people will know you're a leper. You need to, to wear torn clothes. I don't know why, but that's what Moses said. Your hair should be unkempt. Uh, you should uh, cover the lower part of your face uh, and you should yell, unclean, unclean, when you're around people. <laughs> Can you imagine how difficult that was for, for someone who had this terrible physical disability and then on top of that was, was, was considered spiritually unclean? Uh, they were considered, you're, you, you have leprosy probably because you've been a sin. You've done something wrong. And this is God's punishment for you. The same thing happened to people who were blind. You remember in, in John chapter 9, uh, the apostles saw this man blind, and they asked Jesus the question, who sinned, this man or his, or his, uh, his family? They, they, even the disciples thought that was, was the case. To have something that terrible, you had to do something wrong. And you know, sometimes people still feel that way. If, if they become sick or ill, they wonder... What have I done wrong? You know, and, and the Bible doesn't doesn't help us there, uh, because uh, in this case Jesus says, 
there's been no sin committed here, but I'm going to do something that's going to glorify the Father. And, uh, and, and we know that, what that was. He healed the blind man. Um, so if a, if, a, if a person remains unclean, they must live alone, usually outside the camp, outside the city. You know, <clears throat> and talking about what Jesus does here with the leper, have you ever wondered why Jesus didn't heal every leper? And what about people who are blind or who are invalid? Uh, Jesus deals with many, many different situations in, in, in the course of his three-year uh, ministry. Uh, but there's never any indication that he intended to heal everybody, right? <laughs> but he, he healed enough to demonstrate who he was. I am the eternal son of God. I have the power to heal. But more importantly, I have the power to give eternal life. And that's why Jesus came. What was, was, was the, the focus on giving eternal life? I once shared the story of another Chinese woman several years ago who, uh, who said, you know, I, I just love Jesus so much. I don't even need eternal life. I just love him now, you know. And, and it's not that important that I have eternal life. And uh, we thought about that and prayed about that. And uh, I said, let's talk about that some more and, and read some more stories about, about Jesus. Uh, something like John 3.16 is pretty helpful there as well. And, and she came to the conclusion, yes, I am. <laughs> I, am I am glad that I'm saved. I baptized her. And that I have, I have eternal life. And, um, uh, and, and so that's, that's the, the point that Jesus is trying to make, I think, throughout his life. That as important as it is to bring physical, emotional healing, which he does, then and now and will forever until he comes again. He's that kind of God. And he wants us to be doing that as, as, as people of God as well. That we care for physical needs. We care for, for people with, with uh, special needs that, that, that they may have. But we're, we, we do it in the sense of, of praying for the opportunity to share the gospel. There was a very famous man, I may have introduced him to you before, and you may have heard about him many times as well, a man named uh, Father, uh, Father Damien. He was from Belgium. He was born in 1840, died in 1889. Uh, he came to the island of, of, of Malacca, in, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, in Hawaii, as a Catholic missionary. Uh, in, in May of, of, of 1873, he went to this special place, this special island, mm -hmm. where a colony of about uh, 600 lepers lived. They were quarantined. They, they had to live there. They had no, no choice. And that was true of many lepers around the world. Um, uh, I think the United States has had a, a colony or two. Uh, China has had uh, some, some leper colonies. Um, and uh, uh, and he, he, he lived uh, 11 years among, among the, the lepers on the, on the island. Uh, one day, uh, in 1884, in fact, he, was, uh, uh, he, he had, had placed his, uh, his feet, uh, he'd been walking a lot, in some warm water. Mm -hmm. And he realized, I'm not feeling my feet. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he realized that he had leprosy. Uh, it wasn't a, a painful thing, apparently, but, but he understood what was going to happen uh, to him. He lived another five years and went through many levels of suffering, just like any leper would, uh, and, and, and was able to say before he died, uh, I came uh, to leper colony to serve. I've been served by them, and now I can identify with, with, with what it means to be a leper. Uh, we don't have to, to, to have the same disease as someone else. We don't have to have the same uh, emotional problem or difficulty or psychiatric issue or whatever uh, it is to, to identify with people. The Holy Spirit helps us to do that. Uh, by by the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he gives us a heart of compassion, of, 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 of love, for, for people who are, who are, who are hurting. Uh, he, before he, 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 he 
before his, his, his death, in those uh, 11 years uh, that he lived among the lepers, he shared the gospel. It uh, reminds me of the, of the beautiful uh, passage from 1 Thessalonians 2.8, where Paul says to the Thessalonians, I came not only, only, uh, only to share the gospel, to, to share the good news, um, but, but, but to plant my life here as well. To, to share my life, not only the gospel, but my life as well. And that's, I think that's a, a, a Christ-like attitude, uh, is, that, is that we care for people because Christ gives us compassion for, for, for people in need. And as we realized, we were in need, and we had people in the church, and, and certainly uh, uh, God to, to help us. Uh, and, and, and so he, he, he lived the life out in terms of he was very good with with uh, carpentry he he erected many colleges for for uh, people with uh, leprosy to live in he dressed their terribly so smelly ulcers medical care uh, and he dug the graves uh, in which uh, some were, were, were buried uh, and he said I, I lived among you now I will die among you Beautiful thought. Uh, and, and think of uh, some applications uh, today of, of, of serving among people who, who have great need. Uh, and thinking about the, uh, the Catholic saint, uh, uh, Father Damien, uh, uh, Baptists don't, do not have saints. We're all saints, aren't we? <laughs> That's our understanding of the word saint. Uh, in the Catholic tradition, uh, there are some people who've done special things, and if, and, and if they go through the process of years and years and years of, of observation and understanding and the history, and they've done three miracles that can be documented, uh, then they may be uh, uh, canonized as a, as, a, as a saint. But we had, we had a woman named Lonnie Moon, and, and uh, some, some guys have said, she's the closest to a, a saint that we have. No, we've had a lot of people that have served Christ. But, but she served among uh, the Chinese for uh, about 40 years. Uh, shortly after she went to China, which was in about uh, 1865, 1870, she died in the early 1900s. And, uh, she uh, quickly uh, began to understand, if I'm going to identify with, with Chinese people, I need to look more like them. <laughs> I need to dress more like them. I need to eat more like them. And, he, and she did that for year after year after year. Uh, her primary ministry was to women and children. And then she begged the International Mission Board, they even called the Foreign Mission Board, send more men. We need more men. We need more men. <laughs> And there were a few that did come, but not nearly to the degree that Lottie Moon had hoped we would, would come. Uh, she, uh, uh, the story is that towards the end of her life, uh, China was going through some very uh, 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 poor conditions of, of lack of rain. There was a drought, and uh, and, and she was she was a small woman, uh, if if I remember correctly. She wasn't much taller than five foot seven, five foot eight, five foot nine, and and very very tiny person as well, um, short and uh, and very very thin. But she was uh, sharing uh, part portions of her food that she should have been eating for herself with Chinese because she she loved them. She felt uh, they need this, and I I can do without. Uh, they, they tried to rush her back to the United States when they realized she was dying. And uh, 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 near, uh, near uh, Japan, on, on, a, on a ship, uh, she did, uh, did pass away. But goodness, her life lives on. Uh, the, uh, each Christmas, <laughs> uh, Southern Baptist churches all over the United States, uh, 60,000 or so, have something to deal with with Lottie Moon Christmas offering to give money uh, for, for, for missions. I think even more recently, what, what many uh, Chinese, both at Grace and Glory and the Pullman Moscow Chinese Church were involved in was uh, the memorial service after the death of Lu Yang. Uh, 
who, who died of, of cancer. And the memorial service was May the 8th. I remember that because I wasn't able to go. I, I had a fishing trip scheduled with some Chinese <laughs> <laughs> that I went to. But I, I thought very much about what was happening that day while, while, we, were, while we were trying to fish, uh, which didn't go very well, but that's okay. But, but I heard such good reports about what, what the ministry that these two churches and many Chinese provided for her and her family. Uh, very, very significant, very powerful. How they were loved and cared for her. They met basic needs, physical needs, mental needs, emotional needs, financial needs, as well as spiritual needs. Because we know she came to the Lord before she passed away and may have had an, an influence on many, many other people who, who, uh, who heard of and know her and uh, were open to, to the gospel now more than, than ever before. So that's going to continue. Uh, the, the, the last illustration I'm going to share, we're, we're, we're dealing with, 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 with situations where it seems it, they're desperate. <laughs> desperate situations. The leper was de desperate. Uh, many of the situations Jesus deals with were, were people in desperate situations in, in, in life. And, 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 and some people, those desperate situations were not just a few moments or, or, <laughs> or a few weeks. It could be years that, that they've been, been involved with, 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 with difficulties. Uh, I have a, a, a Chinese friend I met uh, about seven years ago, baptized her here uh, at, at Emmanuel. Uh, she, she lives in Harbin, and uh, she's a businesswoman. And uh, we, when she went back to China, we found some help for her, spiritual help. and and. And from time to time, we've stayed in contact considerably. But, but I began to notice that her, her, her spiritual discussion and sharing wasn't what it once was. And we got less and less and less. And I would try to prompt her back, you know, to, to scripture and to prayer and Bible study. And uh, are you meeting with uh, some, some people who are helping you spiritually? Um, but so I was, I was rather saddened by the sense she was not growing <laughs> in Christ at the time. But then all of a sudden, about through two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, I got this, uh, uh, this uh, brief video <clears throat> showing what it looked like was a, was a small church and uh, uh, people were, uh, were praising God, hands up and, and, and singing. And I said, what, what, what's happening here <laughs> in my WeChat uh, uh, message back to her and uh, she explained yes I went to church this morning I, I just got up and realized I need I need I need some spiritual help praise the Lord and uh, um, and she she told me how the people have been so gracious to her uh, every one of them 20 25 30 people but every one of them came to her and said Jesus loves you and I love you I'm glad you're here. And uh, so I was very, very, because she was in need. <laughs> uh, we talk about special needs, but, but at times, Christians, and, and many who go back to China right now, really need help, <laughs> spiritual help. Spiritual needs are, are there. And a week later, uh, she sent me another note. She attended the, the church for the second, second time. And during the service, uh, an amazing thing happened. A person uh, killed over with a heart attack. And they called the ambulance. <laughs> uh, before the ambulance got there, uh, she, had, uh, she had awakened, and, 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 and the pastor was talking to her and praying for her. And then a lot of other people began to, to gather around and pray for her as well. I, I don't know what's happened there. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you when I find out if, if she survived or not. Uh, but she put in the uh, ambulance and, and off, off they went. And, and that's where, where that left. But I thought to myself, as, as she was describing, how the people responded so quickly to, to the heart attack, praying for her. And, and it's almost like I could hear her thinking, boy, what is like this happening in my work, my workplace? Uh, how, how would people respond to that? Well, there would be some medical people 
that would, would give her medical attention, right? Probably so. And, and some could give uh, some artificial respiration uh, and, uh, and, and other things. Certainly call 911, whatever you do in China. <laughs> um, but I think, I think she was saying, wow, this is, a, this is what church is about. You know, this is how people help people, especially spiritually. <laughs> And, and, and that, that really came through to me, that, that she had sensed something that day that's going to help her continue to grow. And I'll, I'll continue to plant that thought in her mind as well, that what you, you saw was, was Christians in action, uh, just like in, in, in the, uh, at the memorial service and before then, uh, long before then, when people began to help and encourage and, 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 and share. So uh, I, I guess... The, uh, the, uh, the application for me is, is, is be able to look for, for people in need this week. Uh, it may not be as, as, as spectacular as someone having a heart attack or someone with leprosy. I probably not meet anybody with leprosy this week. Will you? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but, but there's things that are, are just as bad as leprosy. And probably the thing that's worse than any of this is a lack of spiritual understanding. And they are in severe, severe spiritual need. It's, it's easy to think when, when a person is dying of cancer. Or, 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 or they have been injured so severely they can't walk again. Um, I have a friend who told me on the bus that his, his dad was in a car wreck, a terrible car accident. Broken bones all over his body, and uh, uh, and he, he's blind, and they believe they think he it's it's going to be permanent blindness. And boy, <laughs> you know, you, I, I thought with Billy that is a terrible thing for your dad to go through. I'll, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you, and pray for him. But as 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 bad as that is, I know Billy would say, far worse <laughs> is, is spiritual sickness. It, it, it's spiritual leprosy, where there's no feeling, no desire for, for, for God. And uh, asking the Lord to give us uh, inspiration, uh, uh, conversations that can be built around how, how God can meet needs that we have in life. Mm -hmm. So maybe God will show us someone this week that we can be helpful to. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for this remarkable story of, of, of the leper who was without hope uh, and, and even uh, the, 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 the priest uh, could not offer very much hope uh, if the person continued to have these lesions uh, these facial uh, disfigurations uh, they were just cast away uh, put with other people like, like that uh, and and so there's a, a lot of people with not very much hope. And, and yet, uh, there are many people that don't even realize it, that they're, li they're living without hope either if they don't have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So we just pray that uh, uh, our church, Emmanuel, Grace Glory, uh, Pullman Moscow Chinese Church, and, and, and many other great churches in our community are on the lookout for people in need physical as well as spiritual. And we pray that we'll do, Lord, what you want us to do in each situation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.